It's been thrilling. I love it. Every picture's different. Everything's a challenge. I've been on cattle drives. I've been across the west of covered wagons. I've bought Indians. When you're doing stunts and you know there's moving the camera, there's a sort of reality to it that is quite thrilling. The great saying is so perfect, there's no business it's like show business. In all respects. Lauren Jane should know, after 37 years in the business, he's seen more action than most people ever dream of. Ironically, a stuntman was the last thing he set out to be. I was studying to be an opera singer, of all things. The music world's loss was Hollywood's gain. Lauren's superior diving skills led to his landing a job with stunt pioneer Richard Talmadge. Dick, in my opinion, and a lot of people in the business, was probably the greatest all-around stuntman that ever lived. Dick Talmadge did everything. He'd been on horses, motorcycles. He started out doubling Douglas Fairbanks Sr. Then he ended up directing for director Henry Hathaway, directing the action in the second unit. The epic How the West Was Won was Richard Talmadge's masterwork. Lorne not only performed in many of the movie's major stunts, but had his own camera there to capture this previously untelevised behind-the-scenes footage, including a candid shot of star Debbie Reynolds, who, incidentally, Lorne doubled. I've doubled quite a few girls in my career. In this, I doubled Debbie, and the story was that um, she was in a wagon with Gregory Peck during the big Indian chase. And they hit a bump that throws her out. So I did the fob, hit the ground, and I had this full skirt and a petticoat and everything. And I got up and tripped on the skirt twice trying to run. So anyway, I got through that. And then what happens? A stuntman, Jack Williams, spots this. And he turns to rescue her to do a pickup. Dick Town planned a lot of things for me. And one of them was a train robbery. Playing an outlaw out to rob the train, Lauren's character falls on top of the log car and must fight for his life. I'm hanging on like this, and we go over the trestle, which was 189 feet high. And at the other end, we put a net. When I let go, because of the momentum of the train, I have to let go before the net. And it's really spooky to let go of something and be falling with nothing but 182 feet of rock below you. And I hit the center of the net just perfect, but they had it strung a little tight and I almost bounced out of it. But it was another fall that got the most attention. Yeah, the cactus jump. The idea was that I'm up on top in a gun battle, and I get shot, and the bullet hits me, spins, and then I go flying off, hit the cactus, and the cactus might go down over the cliff. And they had the world premiere of How the West Was Won in Paris, France. And they said the, when I hit the cactus and went down, the entire audience rose, applauded, and sat back down for the rest of the movie. So it was kind of unusual to have a standing ovation in a actual theater. Lauren had the audience glued to their seats for his gut-wrenching work in another classic western, Nevada Smith. You try to figure out a comfortable way to be dragged, and there just isn't. And we did that for two full days, in and out of the river and over rocks, and I was swallowing half the river. <laughs> Lauren endured this punishing scene while doubling the star Steve McQueen. I doubled Steve for 25 years his entire career. Some of my uh, wildest stunts were done doubling him. One of the most dangerous moments came when Lauren stood in for Steve during a cattle stampede. Cattle, according to the script, run right through the big wide open gate and go galloping by. Well, the cattle obviously didn't read the script, and they stampeded really against it. Well, the whole section of the fence broke and crashed down. They got knocked down three times and trampled, and I'm trying to cover up as they're running over me. And... After the dust cleared from the stampede, an alarmed crew saw no sign of Lauren. What happened? One of the steers hit me right in the stomach with his head. Real quick, it came to me, and I hooked my elbows on his horns and hung on and wrapped my legs around his head while I rode him out into the night. Over the years, Lauren performed dozens of dangerous stunts from Queen. In the late star's last film, The Hunter, Lauren took an astonishing train ride, reminiscent of his work and how the West was won 20 years earlier. A lot of people think that a stuntman has a death witch. Well, your good stuntmen do not. There's a difference between that professional stuntman and the glory-speaking daredevil. I've been in the business 37 years. I've worked in over 500 features and over 1,000 TV shows, and I've never broken a bone. I've been knocked unconscious, I guess, three or four times, but I've never been, you know, seriously injured. I, I just try to keep in shape, try to think, try to plan, and then when I do the stunt, I do it wild and reckless. There's been a lot of planning and thought behind it. Today, Lauren keeps in performance shape with a rigorous daily workout. A founding member of Hollywood's first stuntman's association, he balances his on-camera work with second unit directing and stunt coordinating. The stunt coordinator is in charge of all the action on a film. Sometimes the writers will come up with something that's just absolutely impossible or ridiculous. So you have to try to give them what they want and sell the idea without hurting anybody. 
Lauren James has seen the stunt business as few have. He's just about done it all and has always taken the audience with him. For an ovation-rousing lifetime of work, we salute Lauren James. Stuntman. Total of 13.